Well, 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 look at that. Hey, everybody. How are you? Thank you for tuning in and joining us for this live broadcast. Absolutely one of my favorite times of the week. You got Josh Carey here, founder, Pet Sittingology, and PSO Proud. You are, in fact, whether you realize it or not, tuning in to an episode of Tuesdays with Carey. Now that is every single Tuesday I come to you with a new live training. You may not have ever heard of this or seen one before because they are technically typically reserved for members of PSO Proud, but I needed to take this one, extract it, and make it absolutely public for our industry because as you'll see, our guest is way too valuable to keep it inside PSO Proud exclusively. You'll see everything I mean. You are joining us for Social Media Simplified for the Busy Pet professional. And we are going to answer all of your questions and get you over that. What do I do with my Facebook page and social media presence to make a difference? Back to the PSO Proud movement for, for just one second. If you aren't aware of what that is, PSOproud.com is the professional pet cares movement with one main goal and mission. It's simply this to improve the reputation of the professional pet care industry and give you more visibility. So if that resonates with you and you like that and you wanna be part of what we do together, positively impact your community, then consider becoming a PSO Proud member and you every Tuesday can be part of these videos. You'll also on the website be able to read our one page manifesto. This is what we stand for as an industry. Are you with me? Let's all rally together and do the good work that we need to do. Without further ado, let's get to this live event here. You see on the screen who's with me. It's Kaylin Parker. I've been following Kaylin for a while. We've been connected for over a year. I went back to my notes to uh, make sure I had that timing right. Literally, quite literally, everything I do, everything I've learned, I've learned from Kaylin when it comes to how to run my social media presence. She is a social media manager. She's a social media strategist. She's a social media boss. And I'm going to learn exactly what all that means. So let me bring her into the dialogue. How are you, Kaylin? I'm so good. Thanks so much for having me on. Absolute pleasure. Everybody tuning in and watching live, do use that chat box. We have a, a whole variety of topics and questions that you all submitted previously, but it's all about you guys today. Again, we're going to focus on your Facebook business page. And of course, we might, I don't know, I'm sure we'll touch upon other aspects of social as relevant. But for the most part, let's focus on your Facebook presence and understand what's what. Kaylin, set the stage for us. Um, before we get into you, I just, one of my biggest questions personally is simply this. Can anybody do this? Can anybody achieve a Facebook presence that gets results and gets engagement and gets whatever other goals they want for themselves? Or might somebody just be wasting their time tuning in today? Ah, that's a good question, a good kickoff question. So absolutely anybody can master this art of social media. You know, we all run businesses, right? Uh, and we run them successfully. So we can do that. We absolutely can run a Facebook business page and do it successfully too. So it just takes a little bit of knowledge and know-how and strategy, just like in your business. Imagine that. So I introduced you as a social media strategist and a social media manager and a social media boss. What exactly is all that? What do you do day in and day out? I do social media day in and day out. So by day, I run a social media marketing agency. I help businesses with all different industries master the art of social media. So those are companies with many employees all the way down to companies with one you know, hungry entrepreneur. I also teach social media managers how to run their business. So I understand the aspects of running a business and everything that goes into that. You're wearing all of the hats. And, you know, of course, I get the social media part of things, too. So. Excellent. Let me ask, um, 
when we are going down this path to try to, whatever the word is, improve our Facebook business page, what is, what is the end goal that, that we're going for or that we should expect? Like, can I expect new clients through my Facebook activity or should that be reserved for something else? And the purpose of my business page is maybe to nurture my current client. So what is the purpose? What is the actual goal of my business page? Great question. So the purpose has to be first off to understand that social media is the long game. It's all about branding and awareness. And you used a really good word with nurturing your audience, just like with other, you know, forms of advertising. Um, the point is to get the word out there, but social media is a little bit different. It's to be social. We have to think of it that way. And you of course can get leads out of it. You can of course get new clients out of it. Um, but you can't go in expecting that and you can't go in talking like that. You know, not all of your posts should be about um, advertising or promotional types of things. It should be to bring about awareness of what you do, who you serve, what kind of value you can bring to your customers, to the industry, to people. Um, and yeah, it's nurturing over and over. It's the long game. You brought up a perfect word. You said Facebook is about being social. That, that part of me cringes a little bit because, you know, despite what some may think, I'm, yes, I love talking. I love being on camera, but, but a part of me is an introvert really. And I know you, Kaylin, have a whole uh, topic of discussion on you being an introvert. And I'd love for you to touch upon that, for example, because some people tuning in right now are going to say, you know, I, I, I knew it, social media, I get it social, but I'm, I, I don't consider myself so social. You may find yourself as an introvert. What do you do? Yeah, absolutely. So huge disclaimer, I am an introvert too. And I teach that I talk about that. So um, the thing with social media and with our businesses, again, in general, is to have a plan. If you have a plan, if you kind of know how you operate, first of all, if you know that you're introverted and you know that you're on, you know, at certain points of the day, or you know that um, you're kind of capped at how much you can really socialize, that is totally fine. So the easiest and best thing to do is to have a plan. Um, so I, we're going to talk about this, you know, of course, in depth, but having a plan overall, like yearly, what are your goals for your business? What are your goals for social media? Breaking that down per quarter, breaking that down per month and then per week so that, you know, when you set aside time to focus on your social media, it's very intentional and it's within the hours that you prefer to work, that you work best. Um, it's about making it all about yourself um, without talking about yourself so much on social media, but absolutely make your social media plan work for you, just like the way you make your business work for you. You said that you want to have goals for your for your plan and and for your posts and all that. Can you give me an example of what what might a professional pet sitter's goal be? What what could I expect there? It could be a simple goal such as, you know, this year I'm going to put a focus on Facebook. This year, by the end of this year, I'm going to have this many followers on Facebook or I'm going to have posted this many times per week or per month. So it's just setting some parameters for yourself so that you can hit them and create a plan to hit them. So the goal doesn't have to be anything um, overwhelming or super detailed, but just some kind of goal to push yourself to want to create a plan and, and get going with things. Once I establish this, um, and I understand that it's a long game that I need a goal and I'm sure consistency is part of it, which we can explore and go down. What about finding a specific voice? How important is that? Do I just, am I just myself through my business page and just write as I would talk and think and push it out that way? Or do I need to, to think of that differently in order for it to be a success? Sure. It depends on how your business is structured. So if you are the face of your business, then you should be talking in, you know, I first person. If you speak as a business and there's multiple people, you know, kind of a part of this business, then you want to say we. So um, 
having a voice is definitely critical. You know, how do you approach your customers when they come in to your store or, you know, call you for your services? That voice, the way that you speak, the way that you go about customer service, whether it's you or your team, that needs to be the voice on social media. Often we kind of sit down to do social media posts and we get overwhelmed because we sit down and we get very stuffy in the way that we talk. We, we talk a certain way, you know, we're like on the phone and then we sit down and we start typing and it sounds like a totally different person. So yes, you need to have a voice, but it doesn't necessarily have to be your voice specifically, but it has to be the tone that your business represents, how you treat your customers, how you speak to them in general. And one of the biggest topics and questions we are going to get into is engagement. How in the world do I get engagement and what does that look like and really how valuable is that? But before we 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 go down that path, I just want to still unravel a few little steps and thank you for uh, um, uh, posting your questions here. Uh, we're going to answer all of these questions. I love them, so keep them coming in. I want to first talk about the idea of the number of fans that you might have, how important is it to have, let's say a hundred people like your page versus, oh, I, I need a thousand. Do I need a thousand versus a hundred? Where does that conversation begin and end? Yeah, so follower count really does not matter. I've seen pages, I manage pages that have 50,000 followers and they get no likes and no engagement. So it's Absolutely important that we kind of take a step back and realize the importance of social media is to form relationships. And in order to form relationships, that's how you get engagement. And in order to do that, you have to be consistent and have a plan. So me personally, you know, it's like a, a chef who goes to work. They come home and they don't feel like cooking for themselves. So for myself, I struggle with that sometimes having my own social media presence. Uh, it's just because I'm doing it all day long. But my page likes on my Facebook business page, on my Instagram, my email list, they're all small. But you know what? They are very engaged. My Facebook group, it's nearly 80% engaged from the people that are in it. And that's important to, to consider because it's not about how many people follow you, it's how many engaged and interested people you have. And that's on us to do that. Wow. Um, as you can see, as you're talking, I'm scribbling notes here. You wrote that the purpose of our Facebook page is to form relationships. Ironically, I never thought about it like that when I, I happen to be aware that, hmm, isn't that the purpose of life? And isn't that the purpose of any successful business? The more powerful and strategic relationships you have, the better you're going to succeed. And I never really until you just said it. So the purpose of our business page is to form relationships. And so, so the way we achieve that is by, by putting a post out and hope that it perfectly connects with the right people or person who are going to respond so we can form that relationship. Is that the process? No, uh, we no. post to social media uh, without a plan. Again, we're just like, oh man, I got to get a post up today. And, and then we Google what's a really good engaging Facebook post. And then we copy it and we put it into our Facebook page and, and maybe modify it a little bit to, to hopefully suit our audience. And then we hear crickets. And then we wonder why we're hearing crickets. And the reason is because there's no plan. So you cannot go about social media day to day and just post for the sake of posting or post merely for getting engagement on this one post, but it's about coming up with a plan, which we will talk about, and knowing that it's the long game. It takes consistency. You can't just have one post that does well or hope that one post will do well. It takes posting consistently, analyzing what you did and, and how it did. If, if nobody saw it, why? Why did nobody see it? And actually taking a look at that and then posting again at maybe a different time or in a different tone or in a different way. Um, so the point here is that it's a strategy. Um, it takes looking at what you've done and analyzing what you've done and morphing your strategy over time. So it's never going to be just one post. It's multiple posts and it's the plan. Multiple posts. Okay. You spoke about, and, and again, I'm jotting all this down. So I'm going to make sure we, we, we get to all of this consistency. Is that, is there a definitive, 
number? Like, is it once a week or no less than twice a month or it must be once a day? When you talk about consistency, what are we really talking about there? I'm talking about um, there's never going to be the best time of day to post. There's never going to be the correct number of posts per week. You don't know those things yet until you start posting and testing it out. So social media, just like Facebook ads, just like, you know, training our staff, there's a level of testing there and seeing what sticks and what works and continuing to edit that system and that plan. So there's no good time to post. There is no consistency amount that's perfect. It's like the whole point of social media and, and that like I really try to hone in on and teach is mm -hmm. that it's dependent on you and your audience and what your audience wants. So if you post five times a week, one week, and you know that fifth post really started to gain some traction and do well, then try posting five times the next week and then maybe six times the following week. So it's it's up to your audience and you don't know what they want until you start trying. All right, so let's talk about Facebook specifically as the entity. And uh, Pat here asks the great question, is Facebook deciding who sees my posts? Sometimes a very small number are reached. So what is today's Facebook algorithm really like? And are they deciding who sees it? And how do they decide who sees what? Yeah, great. Ultimately, yeah, Facebook is deciding who sees your post. So the way the algorithm works is that Facebook recognizes that we get on social media really not to see a bunch of businesses and their advertisement types of posts. We are on there to see our friends and see our families and the businesses and the causes that we care about. So in order to show up, in order for Facebook to deem your posts worthy of showing up in people's feeds, you have to make your posts and your presence overall w relatable, um, worthy, if that makes sense. You have to provide value. So yeah, that is a huge thing. If people aren't seeing your posts, there's a reason. And it's not just blaming Facebook, but it's okay, taking a step back and realizing, was this post valuable? Is Are my posts valuable overall? Am I creating content that people want to read? That is the, that's how the algorithm works. Like mm -hmm. Facebook is so saturated. If you think of it like that, there are so many businesses, so many people trying to compete for space. And so the way that Facebook has to do it in order to stop overloading us with just every piece of data that's out there, they have to pick and choose the most important. So if you actually open your Facebook right now on your phone, the very first post that you see is what Facebook thinks you want to see the most. Mm -hmm. So in be that business page that starts showing up first or you know sooner rather than later in someone's newsfeed it has to be valuable to them so everything i teach is all about deciphering what is valuable to my audience wow and is there once you once you post something is a like any more or less valuable than a comment? Because it always seems like comments are our are, are best form of engagement and perhaps a share, but I know we're all going for like comments and, and, and we treat that as the, the, the golden engagement stat. Is that true? Is that what Facebook um, values? Sure, I mean, engagement is definitely key. Engagement's amazing, but you have to consider your audience. Who, what's the age range of your audience? Who are they? Um, sometimes people never are going to engage on Facebook. To be totally honest with you, I rarely do. I rarely leave comments on people's stuff, but it doesn't mean I don't see it. And it doesn't mean I don't appreciate it or give it a like or a love or a share mm -hmm. even. Um, but engagement is kind of hard to come by. And so if we really, um, if we really want that, then we have to stop with the fluff posts that are just, uh, here's a little bit of information and then asking a question and hoping that that question provokes some sort of engagement because it's not enough. We have to think a little bit more strategically about the value we're providing. And that in itself often gives room for engagement. I absolutely love that. So you said we have to remove the fluff and get a, a little more, 
a little more, I don't know the word, transparent, vulnerable, uh, uh, informative, whatever it is. So uh, Mary Page asks a great question that, that this ties into. What do the most effective business Facebook posts look like? So if you're talking about like remove the fluff as a professional pet sitter and dog walker in our industry, um, an easy post is going to be, hey, look at this adorable dog that I'm walking today. How wonderful is that? Is that a fluff post and should just kind of be more sporadic than we might be using those kinds of posts? I would change the way you, you talk about it. So you have this adorable dog that you're walking with. What's his name? What did you, where did you walk? What did you do? Like what go a little bit deeper with what that post is and don't just form a question for the sake of forming a question actually again consider what kind of value you can provide um if you encountered something unique on your walk like if you saw somebody else walking their dog and that dog tried to attack the dog that you're walking you could give advice on you know proper ways to walk a dog just how like what kind of questions do people ask you um in your business you know about training a dog walking a dog taking care of a dog and find ways to answer those kinds of questions it's all about giving more than asking give more than you intend to receive on social media you know, it's so fascinating about this because um, I, I don't live much in the social media world. I live in the website, Google SEO world. And when I hear you talking, it's it's all the same, especially when you said that um, it's a about forming relationships. I love that. And you can't just put out a, a picture or a post or a question or a thing and expect engagement. It's the exact same thing I always talk about with a website. You can't just have the handful of typical pages on your site and expect to rank. There are, like you said, Kaylin, there are so many players looking to show up in your newsfeed, just like there are so many uh, things trying to rank in Google. So how do you cut through that clutter on, a, on the Google front. Well, like I always say, you have to create value through blog posts, articles, videos, offer some sort of value consistently. It's the exact same thing you're talking about. And I'm just getting that aha moment that, wow, it is the a very similar shtick. And in order to show up in Google, in order to show up in people's news feeds, it's got to be valuable because guess what? You wouldn't like it if you scroll through your newsfeed and just see a variety of fluff or very flimsy, non-important or entertaining or essential or social posts. So right. we really need to come to the table to figure out and determine, I love your example. It's not just about, hey, look at this cute, adorable, beautiful dog I'm walking. Isn't she magnificent? Yeah, fine. I'm sure she is. But is that going to get somebody to to stop, to think, to feel what will is like you said? And it's the same stuff I always talk about, about creating value on your website. You already have it all up here. And Kaylin said the exact same thing. While you're walking that dog, what is the nature of your relationship with the dog? What is special, unique, quirky, fun about the dog's personality? What happened prior to the picture? Where are you going, right? Get people to feel something. And I'm sure you're not isolated in this dog walk. It's not, oh, here's a picture. I'm going to post it and expect the world. No, think a little bit more consciously because it already exists. You're already in that moment. You're already walking the dog. You already have a relationship with the dog, with the environment, with the, with the pet parent, with the client. Did you overcome something? Was it a shy dog that you're finally getting out of the house? Is there a brand new leash that you can talk about and offer value? So it's those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that brings up two things for me too, is that one, not every post is going to be a home run and we can't expect okay. it. Okay. So it's just the case. Like we literally cannot have every post be a long form post. Not every post is going to be like absolutely full of, you know, chock full of value, right? Sometimes we do just want to post some of the like, here's a great picture of a dog type of post. And that's fine. That helps build consistency. Um, not every post is going to be a home run. 
And the other thing that can be kind of overwhelming sometimes when we are walking the dog and, and we want to take a photo of it and post it right away and share all this value, that can be just immensely overwhelming. So one thing that I teach is um, not everything has to be in the moment to provide value. So say you're walking a dog and you get the chance to snag a good you know, photo or even a cute little video of you and the dog and just something quick and simple. Save it on your phone in an album dedicated to social media posts. And then when you are scheduling and planning your posts ahead of time, you have this arsenal of tons of photos and tons of things that you can choose from. So you don't have to post everything in the moment for it to be valuable. You can post that dog photo three days from now and it still be super valuable. People don't know that you're actually not walking the dog right now. And that's okay, it's not lying, it's not um, misleading. It's just, you know, having a plan. Mm hmm. Perfect. Speaking of a plan, you've you, you've said that uh, you have to come up with a plan. W help us through that journey. Where do we begin? How do we come up with a plan? And what does that mean? Sure. So what I really wanted to talk about was um, creating batching content. So the whole point of this is simplified social media for the busy professional. So having a plan and you might want to write this down is you want again to think of your social media in buckets so think of it over the year over the quarter over the month but for the purposes of this call i'm just going to talk about the month for right now the easiest thing i can tell you is to come up with a a list of questions that your customers or people uh, that you work with often ask you and they're going to be those questions that seem like you already know it you could talk about this stuff in your sleep um like some of the questions that you are all are asking me are very common questions in the industry so you're not alone many people have those questions but the same thing applies to you you often probably get like what's the best leash for a dog how long should i walk my dog and you know i'm not an expert on dogs or animals like you all are but um what kind of questions do you get that people ask often those questions that seem kind of simple to you maybe that you forget about but are still super important like seriously write them all down and then what you want to do is to batch create content i come up with two things so one you want to come up with as many um topic posts as you possibly can so topics or categories so an example that i love giving is um let's use it in in your pet industry so a topic would be a very broad overarching topic right so let's say um care for dogs in the winter that's a topic and then a talking point you want to come up with as many talking points underneath that umbrella as you possibly can so a talking point under the umbrella of care for dogs in the winter would be um you know keeping care of their pads um, their fur, does it get matted in the snow? Um, kind of questions that people ask about that particular topic can become a bunch of different talking points. Does that make sense? So, yes. Do they need a jacket? What's too cold? How long in the cold? How can I tell if my dog is too cold? Things like yeah. that. Right. Yes. Every single one of those talking points can be a social media post. It's as simple as that. So literally right now, you just came up with like seven social media posts. So it makes it so much easier when you actually think of a plan like that, because then you end up having this really great map on your piece of paper. And again, it's a topic, a broad overarching category or topic, and then a bunch of talking points underneath that topic. And I promise you, if you actually sit down and do this, you're going to come up with 60 plus talking points that you can use for social media posts. So then when you're out there and you're walking your dog or you're taking care of a dog or whatever it is that you do in your business the most or, or at all, then you can take a photo of it and stow it away in an album of photos. And then when you find a talking point that you want to use, you have the photo for it probably already. So just you're constantly thinking of things. You're constantly thinking of questions that people are asking you and jotting it down somewhere specific. You're constantly taking photos that you can, again, stow away and use when the time is right so that you're never sitting down and saying, oh, man, I got to post to Facebook. I have no idea what I'm supposed to post. And you're coming up with something on the fly and it just feels overwhelming and probably didn't work very well. So this mm. is a plan that you want to create. 
again, it's the exact same thing I talk about and that works for SEO and Google rankings and your website, create value and come up with a plan and use what you already know. Use your specialized knowledge. It's the same exact thing. You're just putting them in your website versus putting them in a post and then all of that creates your your brand and could potentially uh be your plan for engagement yeah absolutely sure let's talk about uh boosting a post and then we'll connect that to facebook advertising because i know that they're um in the same family but two very distinct and different things let's talk about boosting a post what is it does it work do we want it sure so boosting a post is what you can do to uh you pay a little bit of money and you send that boosted post out to either a targeted audience or to the people who like your page. This can get really dangerous because the money can add up when you're boosting posts, especially when you're boosting posts without a plan or you're just boosting posts in hopes of getting more engagement. Because first, you're kind of avoiding the things that we just talked about. You're not taking an organic post, meaning an unpaid post, and analyzing how well it did and why. So if you're just boosting every single post in order to get engagement, you're missing what the true data is. Like if you're boosting a post that isn't going to do well anyways, because you didn't check the data and see you know, how many people actually saw it or engaged with it, then you're spending money for no reason. Secondly, people really don't like seeing the word sponsored under a post. They really don't. And so then if all of your posts end up saying sponsored underneath, you're kind of, again, showing people that you are on social media for the sole reason of getting new business. And now we may be on there for that purpose and maybe that purpose alone, but you don't want people to feel like that because you don't want to feel like that when you're scrolling through Facebook and reading and trying to find your best friend's post. You're, you're not hoping to see a bunch of, um, of sponsored posts. And finally, I really advise, uh, you know, I'm not a huge fan of boosting in general anyways. Um, you can actually take a post and turn it into an ad, which you get far more analytics with, you get far more options with. But if you have to boost a post, I would absolutely do it with a purpose. Is there a call to action on your post? Is there a specific reason for boosting a post? Or did this post do really well? And you know that you're going to get more bang for your buck if you boost it, right? So another reason that I I am a fan of, one reason that I am a fan of boosting posts when the time is right is if you have a piece of content that is either like somebody else's viral content that you're kind of using on your page or something that you know is really attractive to your audience, um, boosting that post gives you the option to, again, hit more people, but then you can ask those people to like your page. And so you only want to boost a post if the post is good, if the post has a call to action and the post is relevant to your business, because those people that liked it, you want them to be relevant to your business. You want them to be potential customers. You want them to be, you know, you want to be top of mind to them. Um, but then you can ask them to like your page. So the reason I'm not a fan of like ads that um, are page like ads or boosted posts that have no meaning is because you can boost a post and invite those people to like your page, but you want them to be the right people. So mm -hmm. you want to boost posts that are relevant so that you can invite those people to like your page and they are the right people or they're the right people that are engaging with your page because otherwise you're just paying for like random people to engage with your page and what's the point of that? Hmm. Cynthia just asked a great follow-up to that. Um, she says, it seems like if your posts aren't boosted, they're not widely seen by your audience or following. So let me uh, double back and see if I can connect that and then get your thoughts on this. So if I understand everything we're talking about, social media is a long game. It's not just a few times here or there, oh, it doesn't work and that's it. We have to commit to it. We have to put a plan in place, uh, even for the month. And we have to provide value, just like I always say with a website, no different And how you rank in Google because there's so many people competing, right? Facebook has its work cut out and they need a differentiator. They need a way to determine who's going to see your posts and whose posts you're going to see. You expect the same uh, deal in your world. So if, if I'm not mistaken, 
It's about offering value and not just putting out fluff after fluff. Like, hey, isn't this a cute dog? Sure, that has its place. And you want to offer a picture and a video and a perhaps a few paragraphs of value and information. But over time, it's that sort of insight and posts and value that you're providing that eventually are going to increase engagement and get seen by more of the right people? Yes. So if you are boosting a post merely to get more engagement because you think that's what you're supposed to do or you feel like Facebook isn't you know, sending your post to people, then again, you are setting yourself up for failure for the next post that you do because that post isn't going to get any engagement because you're not but the biggest thing in social media is to take a look at the data that's provided to you. You have so many insights into your Facebook posts. Just click the insights tab from your business page and check out how the posts are doing. It's kind of scary to look at it and say, oh man, this post didn't get a lot of reach, but then you'll see, okay, compare. This post did do pretty well, this post didn't. And then you're gonna say, okay, out of this week, this post did the best, why? Why did it do the best? Was it because of the copy? Was it because of the video or the photo? Was it the timing? And then try to duplicate that again and again. So again, by just boosting, you're not paying attention to the strategy. You're not paying attention to the data. You're just mm. boosting for the sake of boosting and that's not going to ever be effective. So the thing is with getting your posts seen more often, you really do have to take a step back and realize what is valuable to your audience. And a hint is that it might not always be the most valuable thing to you. An um, example I have is one of my clients is a dentist. Nobody likes going to the dentist. Nobody likes talking about the dentist. Nobody likes seeing things from the dentist, <laughs> right? But they have a very engaged Facebook page because we talk about the things that people um, value when going to the dentist. If you're scared of going to the dentist, we wanna post you know, things of a patient with the staff and they're all smiling and truly having a good time. That's valuable to me as a potential, like, you know, I'm putting off having to go to the dentist. I don't want to go. And then I see a smiling photo of everybody and like, they all seem to be comfortable and having a good time. Then it's top of mind for me again. So the dentist may not, you know, find value in the posts that they're posting. It's not valuable to them. Right. But it's engaging to their customers and to their audience. So putting your audience first is truly going to win. Not the first time you do it. You might see crickets, you know, for a couple times, but by kind of truly trying to dig deep and figure out what your audience values and paying attention to the analytics on the back end, you're going to come up with a plan and realize what's working and what's not. You just have to pay attention to it. And it's kind of hard and it's kind of scary, but just like in business, if you aren't paying attention to your books and your numbers and you're just doing things that you are were told that you were supposed to do, and then it's not going to work out. But when you pay attention and you realize like you had a really stellar week as far as revenue goes and you pay attention to why that was, then you want to duplicate that the next week. Of course, it's the same thing with social media. Quick thing, Kaylin, can you lower your speaker just to drop? I think there's a bit of feedback on your coming through your speaker. All right. Um, so, so let me ask you this about boosting a post, uh, and, and tying back a very important point we made earlier, which is you have to have a plan. It's a long game and you want to have a goal for your uh, result. Do, wouldn't it help for those asking, Hey, uh, should I boost a post, for example, to get in front of more eyeballs? Isn't the first question you want to ask is why? It's it's certainly not for the sake of just getting in front of more eyeballs, but what's that next step? What are you hoping getting in front of more eyeballs would do? A, that's a valid question, right? And B, what are some answers that we'd want to boost up? What do we really want? Do we just want engagement and that's the win? What are we looking for? No, honestly, engagement without... A purpose is just a vanity metric. Okay. Right. So right. Um, ha you want engagement from the right people. You want engagement from the people that are likely to become your customers and value your services. So that's why it's the long game. And that's why it takes this continuous tweaking of what you're doing. Um, because otherwise, who are you engaging with? Who are the people that are liking your posts? If you kind of look at their Facebook pages, you might realize that they don't even live near you or they don't even, you know, they have another provider of your services. So you just, 
kind of wasted your money and you wasted your time. You can absolutely have an organic social media strategy without spending money. Um, it just takes a little bit more effort. And what is, to, to go back to an earlier topic, just to reiterate, because I think it's so valuable and so important and I don't want to lose it personally, what is the absolute goal or purpose of our Facebook business page? Again, is it to, to gain more clients? Is it to grow our brand awareness? What is the end result purpose of doing all this? It's brand awareness. It's building relationships. And it's to have a presence somewhere that's free <laughs> in order for people to notice you. Like if you think about it, Social media is free. It is a free space where you can form relationships with people and get in front of people. You just have to, to remember that, that, you know, it's, there's a strategy behind it. And in order to, to show up um, and, and be seen, you have to build relationships. So building relationships through value and providing the kinds of things, you know, your people want to see. Is it also helpful to think about it in this way? Because this is the way I assume it to be true. Um, I have my business. Um, I have a website. I have a blog. I offer value. I do videos. But then I also deliberately put certain things on Facebook because I know that the people who enter my world from my website are most probably also going to see what I'm like on Facebook, to see if I have a presence on Facebook, to see if I'm worthy, if I'm trustworthy, if I'm knowledgeable, if I'm caring, if I'm experienced, right? So isn't it also helpful for us to just use our business presence, like you said, to dispense that value so people will start connecting the dots, even if they're just doing research to say, oh yes, okay, this is a, experienced, knowledgeable, wonderful, trustworthy, caring professional? Yeah, absolutely. You you want to, and that's brand awareness, in my opinion. That's building exactly. your reputation and how you represent yourself. And so if you're representing yourself even on Facebook with just um, posts that really to do read as if you are just kind of selling your services, promoting your business, um, kind of providing fluff, then that's how your business is represented. And that's not to be scary or overwhelming, but it's to just remember that social media is social. Um, and by being social, then you're building your brand awareness and your brand reputation. So somebody might say, yeah, I get that social media is social and all of my posts are social as far as I can define it. I'm, 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 I'm offering some, some things I'm asking questions I but crickets where's the connection there is it about well reevaluate the value and the style and the approach yeah if if you're seeing crickets there's a reason so um if for again you can still do that comparison of your analytics of which post did the best in in determining why it did the best and if it's a photo of you at an event Go to more events and take more photos at events. If it's of you walking, you know, dogs, then make sure to take more photos of walking the dogs and posting about them in various ways. So um, I can't stress enough that the biggest thing is it's a strategy and there's testing involved. But the main thing is giving back to people and, and getting out there with your message. And it does. It took me a year and a half to build my own true email list and presence. It takes time. It doesn't take, it's not even just, you know, one post that's going to do it. It takes time um, mm -hmm. and effort, but I promise it, it works out in the end. Yeah. And uh, Beth writes, I sometimes ask questions, but seldom get any response beyond likes. What type of questions seem to work? And I think that this all goes back to the theme we're hitting on. Again, it's just such a beautiful light bulb moment for me that, gosh, the same exact stuff that works on your website to rank in Google, the value and how you offer it on your website to get the attention you deserve because you already have it all up here is the same approach 
for Facebook. So think about your own specialized knowledge. Think about, and I've spoken about this over and over again when it comes to your website, but now I'm seeing, whoa, we could take all of that and that could be the basis of your topic, like Kaylin says. Come up with a month-long topic. So it's cold, like let's talk about winter if that's your thing, if that's what you like. Or it could be anything, whatever your specialized knowledge is. Is it about pet health and nutrition? Is it about puppy care? care? Is it about um, uh, uh, um, introducing a new pet to a multi-pet household? Is it about cat tips? Is it about training your dog uh, with a new baby? Whatever it is, you have a broad topic. And then under that, you can then have a place from which to go and start putting that value on your social media. But I also find, for uh, for an example, I was talking to one of our colleagues uh, two days ago, and she her specialized knowledge is about pet grief and counseling, okay, end of life and all of that. And she, I'm I'm helping her build out her website to to offer all of this that that she now wants to embrace and get out there because um, she has a lot of uh, counseling methods and resources and tools and services in that pet grief space. So don't you think it would make sense for her to slowly but surely start putting that out and offering help and value and answering questions and resources and tools and how to prepare for it for people who are not yet there, but come on, we all know the inevitable. So there's just so many so many angles and ways to go for you to start just slowly but surely focusing and honing in on what your specialized knowledge is. Just like we talk about for Google and SEO, Facebook I'm learning is no different. Sure. Um, I think one of the things that is also important to say is there is literally no cookie cutter answer for anything on social mm. media. There's no best time to post. There is no best question to ask. There is no best post to create. Um, video doesn't always do better than posts. Um, there's no cookie cutter answer. And if there were, I would make a lot of money by sharing those answers. But you can Google all day long and truly find like what works best on social media. What kind of questions should I ask? Is it post? Is it a a long form post? Is it a photo? Is it a video? Is it a live video? Um, there are certainly certain tactics that may be trending or that Facebook may be favoring, you know, here and there. But overall, there's no cookie cutter answer. It's a, it's a matter of testing what works and tweaking what you're doing all of the time. Love that. And we spoke about boosting a post. Is it, uh, to, to now segue, Facebook ads and advertising? Massive subject, I understand. Slightly different than boosting the post, but I'm sure a lot of similarities um, occur. Kaylin, what do you, what do we have to know about Facebook advertising? Uh, there's a lot there. Uh, that's something I could talk about for months on end. Yeah. Um, but with Facebook advertising, the first thing that you want to do is make sure that again, you have a plan. So you never want to spend money on Facebook if A, your business is first starting out and you don't have the money to spend. Uh, you don't want to spend money on Facebook if you're not very clear on what the lifetime value of bringing a customer in is. Because you want to make sure that you are making money off of your Facebook ads, not just spending money. You should never be spending money for awareness um, when you can do it for free, especially when we're all small business owners, right? So when you start to run Facebook ads, you have to have a very clear call to action. Um, and just to simplify this, because again, this is a very complex thing. Um, learn as much as you can about Facebook ads because they are very complex. They're very deep. There's so much that you can do with them. Um, one of the biggest things that people miss out on is targeting. Um, understanding who your audience is and targeting the right people is the most important thing. And you don't have that information until you start doing organic social media and learning more about your audience and building those relationships. So I think Facebook ads might be a better conversation for another time because the biggest <laughs> thing is that they're, they're complex. And, um, and I really advise learning about them before just kind of getting started and spending money there. 
So, so powerful. Everybody watching and tuning in. I have three pages of notes. I hope that I have gotten to uh, really dissect and answer and provide you with the answers that you need. Please let me know in the chat box before we part ways. We'll wrap it up in just a uh, a little bit of time. But is this productive? Are you are you seeing things? Do you have the the sort of answers and the motivation and knowledge to go and to start that ball? Let me know in the chat box if this is uh, productive, if it's effective, if you're getting what you need out of this. If you have any unanswered questions, please post them there. We'll make sure they get answered. Kaylin, for the record, is in our Pet Settingology Training Center Facebook group, where I know a lot of you are. So thank you, by the way, Kaylin, for participating in that and being one of us. Um, yeah. Excellent. Um, one of the questions uh, somebody or a couple have asked, and uh, I'd love your take on this. Let's talk scheduling tools and software. Do they work? Are they worth it? Which ones do we use? What's the deal? Yeah, I absolutely think they have their place um, because, again, the biggest thing is we're all very busy. So um, I'm not a big fan of just sticking a bunch of posts inside of a scheduler and then never checking on them. Um, but you absolutely can use a scheduler. Um, there's a few that are my favorites. Um, for one, if we're all kind of talking about Facebook, you can schedule right inside of Facebook. I actually find that to be the easiest thing to do because you're right inside the platform um, and dragging and dropping photos into it and things like that can be a lot easier than some of the other ones. Um, but I do have a few. Maybe I could just tell them to you, Josh, and you can maybe make like a show notes or something like that um, rather than spitting out the different ones, but ultimately um, they're all pretty similar. So I would definitely find one that suits your needs the most um, and you use them purely to schedule um, maybe a week in advance. And that's the, the most you don't want to schedule like a month's worth of posts in advance in case they become irrelevant by the time they go out. Um, and also to prevent yourself from just putting things out there and posting them and then kind of never going in and checking the data or responding to comments and engagement. I ugh, I just got the chills because I'm listening to you. I'm watching the comments come in. I'm looking at the feedback. And thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in. Megan writes, this has been some truly amazing information. I'm just getting started and really appreciate this. This is one of the things that whether you're just getting started or you're a 10 or 20 year veteran, it's always helpful because we all struggle with this speak and, and and i know kaylin that this could be a whole other topic and if we should be so lucky down the road i'd love to pull you back and do a follow-up something or other but since we're talking about social media we focused on facebook you know short and sweet what is your take on um you know the the other platforms how do we how do we visualize how do we approach what do we need to know about other platforms twitter instagram pinterest what have you I would just um, first make sure that your audience is there. Uh, don't get on Snapchat if your audience isn't on Snapchat. So be where your audience is, um, first of all. And then second of all, don't be so overwhelmed by all the other platforms. I would, I would start with one and get very good at one of them and get comfortable with it and then branch out to the other ones. Because if you do you know, three at a time, then it can be very overwhelming. And to answer someone's question that I just saw, you shouldn't post the same thing to all of your platforms because you probably have a similar audience on all platforms. And I can guarantee you if you have the same thing on Instagram as you have on Facebook and someone first sees your post on Instagram and then they go to Facebook and see the same post, they're not going to engage with it. They're just going to scroll right past it because they already saw it. So you want to make sure that your posts are different. It can be a similar topic. It can be the same photo even, but you want to talk about it in a different way. Um, because each post or each platform is different. That's why they, they're distinct in different platforms. So we want to use them to the best of their ability. So in order yeah. to prevent overwhelm there, just get in with the one that you feel the most comfortable with first and then start to branch out to the other ones. Yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm a prime example of that. I I do not consider myself schooled in any way in social media best practices. I'm I'm learning as I'm going. My only social media presence for pet settingology is my Facebook business fan page. I I mean, I have an Instagram account. 
I don't use it. I, I have a Twitter, rarely use it. Uh, Pinterest, no. You know, so it's like I'm only focused on my Facebook business page because I'm just starting to understand the value and benefit and knowledge there for that. So, you know, it is what it is. We we sometimes feel like, oh, but but maybe I'm missing out over there. And we don't have to. Sure. Yeah, I think they all have their place and it would be beneficial to start to hop on some of the other ones and learn about them. But um, you want to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. So start where you're most comfortable and get good there. That's right. And uh, thank you, Brian, for pointing out his comment was solely hashtag PSO 2018. That's right. If you like this and you like things like this, you're absolutely going to love our October conference, PSO 2018. You know it's happening in Las Vegas. Come on, we're going back to Las Vegas. Where? Planet Hollywood. How perfect is that? You can't beat it. If you like this, if you like practical advice and the other flip side of that, that we are going to be focusing on in Vegas is what's up here. How important is this? It's not just the tangible, practical strategy. It all begins right here. It absolutely does. I am living and breathing proof of that. I've spent the vast majority in my life in a state not understanding what's up here makes all the difference to what's out there. And we're going to focus on your personal growth, your positive mindset, and how to positively impact the world around you so you can take all of this strategy and put it to the best use. PetsittingLive.com has all of those details. Again, thanks, Brian, for pointing that out and reminding me that we have an incredible conference coming up. This video session will be available for replay. It will also be waiting for all PSO Proud members in the members area. If you want to become part of our industry movement and make a difference and help improve the reputation of our industry and the visibility of the professional pet care provider, PSO Proud is your destination. Woo, we have a lot of great things going on. Kaylin, I am so stoked that you are part of us and you took your time and you did this. If people want to stalk you, how and where can they do so? Uh, join me on Facebook. I go live there a lot to talk about social media strategies and tips. So it's facebook.com slash Kaylin, K-A-Y-L-Y-N, Joy Parker. I love it. So um, you don't mind getting some friend requests or some private That's messages? My That's what? my business page. So it's easiest to communicate with me on my business page. Yeah. That's what I mean. So people will communicate and they'll uh, they'll push the buttons and they'll say hello. All right. Any final thoughts? No, I really appreciate having me on here. This was really fun. I hope you all gained some value from that. Um, and yeah, if there are some follow up questions, I know that my approach is a little bit different and it is, you know, having your own strategy and, and tweaking things on your own. Um, I definitely would do like a follow up session. So. Whoa, you heard it here. Definitely do a follow-up session. I love that. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Again, Kaylin is one of us now. She's in our circle. So you have any questions, comments, thoughts, follow-ups, needs, concerns you want, send them my way. I'll do my best to get them over to her. We'll keep this conversation going pleasure spending the time with each and every one of you. Hope it was valuable and informative. Please keep the conversation going. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk soon.